Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Thor's love and Thor's thunder are not actually mentioned very often in our sources for Norse mythology that survive from the Middle Ages, the Poetic and Prose Edda. In this video, I'll look at really the one instance in which Thor is explicitly associated with thunder, and I'll look at what little is said about his wife, Siv. <laughs> Now, the main reason that Thor comes to be associated with thunder today is simply that his name means thunder. In fact, it's from the exact same word in Proto-Germanic, the ancestor of the Germanic languages like the Scandinavian languages, English and German, as the English word thunder is. Both come from a Proto-Germanic word that would have been thunraz. Now, in English, that oz, that masculine grammatical ending, is lost entirely. A D is inserted between the N and the R that constitute different syllables, and you get more or less a direct survival as thunder. In Old Norse, you get a little bit more complicated story that Oz becomes the second R in Thor, as the name is spelled in Old Norse. The U is lowered to O before the N, which then disappears, and so you get Thor in classical Old Norse or Viking Age Old Norse. And in fact, the name Thor is one of the few god names that survives in runes from the period when people still believed in these gods, spelled Thorn or Wraith in the Viking Age Younger Futhark runic alphabet. But there's only one place in all of the Eddas where Thor is actually explicitly associated with thunder. He otherwise really has nothing to do with it in our stories. And that is in Skaldskapramal in Snorri Sturluson's Prose Edda, where Thor appears for his duel with the Jotun, or uh, as I called them in the course that I recorded for the great courses, uh, anti-god, more often called giants. He's being named uh, Hrungnir he's going to fight. And there we read, Thvi nast sohan ellingar okwerdi thrymur storar. Sohan tho Thor i osmodi. For han okavliga o kredi hamarin o kastadi um langale that hrungni. Next, he, Hrungnir, the Jotun anti god giant, saw lightning and he heard great thunders. He then saw Thor in a godly rage. He came forward eagerly, energetically, vigorously, and he readied his hammer and he threw it a long way toward Hrungnir. That's it, otherwise, uh, the name of his hammer, Mjolnir, could well be related, uh, ultimately, distantly, to, for example, the Russian word Molnia. I hope I'm saying that halfway right. I don't know any Slavic language that well, uh, which means lightning. So then we could have a god whose name means thunder, who wields a hammer named lightning. But how much Old Norse speakers would have been conscious of these deep etymologies for these words after all, Thor isn't like a common word for lightning for thunder in Old Norse. It's it's Thruma, which we saw in that excerpt from Skaldskapramal. It's kind of doubtful. So we have to remember that the meaning of a name, while it might shed some light on where a god or other figure comes from, doesn't necessarily illuminate very much what that god's rule is in the sources that we have preserved, right? In the Eddas. Thor is a personality, right? He's someone you get a sense of what it would be to sit down at a table with him, but he doesn't seem to have, you know, lightning and thunder powers. He's written not, he's not a character sheet. He's a, uh, he's an actual character, right? He's more of a, a personality than he is a, a set of powers, abilities, or domains. Let me give you a quick word from my friends and partners at Grimfrost, and I'll tell you a little bit more, uh, because there is a little bit more, about his wife, Siv. Now I say her name like that because an F that does not begin a word in Old Norse 
is pronounced as a V. You can see that in uh, cognates between Old Norse and English like silver, almost the same word in the two languages but spelled uh, with an F in Old Norse. All right, so Siv mostly is known as the wife of Thor, or rather, mostly we hear about her when Thor is called, for poetic reasons, Siv's husband. Um, Old Norse is an alliterative language when it comes to poetry, so we like to have things that start with the same sound. So when we want to call Thor something that starts, when, when we need to alliterate his name with something that starts with an S, it's convenient to use his wife's name. So for example, in a poem in Gretz's saga, or three times in Hymiskvitha and the Poetiketa, or one time in Thrymskvitha and the Poetiketa, uh, Thor is called Sivyar Ver, Siv's man, Siv's husband. And by that way, that word Ver for a man is uh, the word that survives in English in werewolf, right, man-wolf, but in Old Norse, a more common word, often means husband. Uh, we also see in a skaldic poem by Oystein the plagiarist, uh, that Thor is called Sivyar Runi, right, the one who whispers with Siv or shares her secrets, another term for her lover. But Siv herself is not mentioned very often. In Gilvaginning, the part of Snorri Sturluson's prose edit that's read the most, Siv doesn't even make Snorri's pretty inflated list of goddesses, and she's mentioned there only as the mother of Ullr. Pretty dubious tradition, though it's interesting that uh, Snorri also makes Thor Ullr's stepfather, implying that Siv is the mother of Ullr with some other god. Uh, although, of course, we also notice that in the prologue to the prose Edda, Snorri, because uh, he's trying to make equivalence of the uh, uh, figures of the Iliad and the Odyssey and of Greek mythology with the uh, figures of Norse mythology, he says that Siv is the same as a Sibyl. Of course, that's not an old tradition. That's just Snorri trying to, quote, rationalize the Norse myths. We get a little bit more about Siv in the story of how Thor's hammer Mjolnir was made. Uh, this story is told most fully in the part of Snorri Sturluson's prose that called Skaldskapramol. And there we read, Loki Lavoyerson have the that gert to lavisi at klippa hor alt av Siv. In their Thor vartes var, tok han loka och minde limja hvert bein i honom oder hans varthi thes at han skal få av svart olvum, at der skulle gera av guli siv ju had, than er svo skal vaxa sem annat hår. Hadren var holt groen theger han kom o hovud siv. So Loki Lavoyerson had done it for deception, to the purpose of deception, basically for the evil to, uh, he had clipped all the hair off of Siv. And when Thor became aware of this, he took Loki and would lame every bone in him before he answered, Loki answered, that he would get some black elves, another word for dwarves probably, since these beings are later called dwarves in the exact same paragraph, to make a head of hair for Siv out of gold, which would grow like other hair. And then we read later, after it was made, that the head of hair grew into her flesh immediately when it came onto the head of Siv. And then this is uh, Thor getting Loki to have this hair made for Siv out of gold is what starts uh, this competition between dwarves to make other treasures for the gods like Mjolnir or, or uh, Odin's spear, Gungnir. I've told that story more fully elsewhere. We also have a tradition of Siv cheating on Thor. I call it a tradition because it's kind of attested to two places both in the context of insulting Thor, but that doesn't mean necessarily they're untrue. And I tend to think that the insults in Lokasena probably are true because uh, of the way the gods react to them. They don't try to deny them. They just uh, come back at Loki with their own insults. So in uh, Lokasena, this poem where Loki insults all the gods, which I've, of course, done a detailed read through on my channel, Siv brings Loki some mead and she asks him not to insult her. She says in stanza 53, Hail verthu nu Loki, o tak vid hrim kolki fulum forns mjadar, heldr thu hana eina lotir meth osa sonum vama leusa vera. So be hail now, Loki, and receive the glass full of old mead, 
rather than, or the, the grammar of this is complicated as I discussed in, in my video that covers the stanza. It's almost like she's saying, in hopes that you let her alone, i.e. me alone, she's talking about herself in third person, among the gods be faultless. But of course, Loki drinks the mead and then says in stanza 54, Ein thu varir, ef thu swo varir, vor o krom at veri. Ein ek veit swo at ek vita thukium, hor o ka florida, o kvartat so in la visi Loki. You would be alone if you were wary and cold with men. There's that word ver for man again. I alone know, or so I seem to know, of a man whore, essentially a whore, uh, against Thor. A, a, a cheating of Thor, a, a uh, you know, sub supplanting of him in his married bed. And the one who did it, the man, Hor, the Hor, was the deceit wise Loki. Odin himself seems to refer to this when he's exchanging insults with Thor uh, toward the end of the poem. Horbars the Odin, the Porketa. Sansa 48, he says, Siv o ho hema hans muntu fund vilia, than muntu drek, trek drigia, that erther skildara. Siv has a, again, like whore man, whore at home. You'll want to meet with him. Commit, you'll want to commit that test of strength. That is more needful for you, more needful than fighting with Odin the ferryman in this poem. Now, Thor says in Sansa 49, Maler thuat muns rodi swat merskuldi verst thickja, haller in hugblaudi hugek atu lugur. You speak uh, at your mouth's council, basically just whatever your mouth comes up with, whatever should seem worse to me, you cowardly, you, uh, moist couraged, moist hearted man, I think that you lie. Sansa 50 Odin says, I think I say the truth. So, could potentially be the truth. If so, maybe Loki is the one uh, that she's cheating on Thor with. That would be supported by Lokasena. Uh, but again, we see nothing else about this. And of course, Thor himself isn't faithful to Siv. Snorri gives these kennings for Siv. Wife of Thor, mother of Ullr, the fair-haired god, goddess, uh, but god is gender neutral in Old Norse. The sister wife of Yarn Soxa, reminding us that Thor cheated on uh, on Siv to have uh, Magni with the uh, Jotun or giant woman or anti goddess Yarn Soxa, and mother of Thruther. Thruther, which means strength, must be the daughter of Thor. She might be the one who is mentioned in the poem Alvi Small, although that doesn't necessarily come from the same tradition as the one that made Siv, mother of a being named Thruther who's otherwise never named in any kind of narrative. We have to remember so often in Norse mythology, not only that we have so little preserved, but also that there was no interest in the people who compiled the poems in the Poetic Edda, or even really on the part of Snorri in writing the Prose Edda, um, in presenting a fully cohesive religious system, basically, right? This is lore in the same way that different issues of a comic book might contradict one another, but still have a fairly consistent set of characters. Again, this is something I actually cover fairly in depth in my uh, course that I recorded for the great courses about Norse mythology. You can find that on Audible. You can also find, I still have these in my bag, the uh, audiobooks of my translation of the Poetic Edda and the Saga of the Volsungs. Maybe eventually the other two sagas that I translated, even the Wanderers Havamal, had to figure out how to record the Wanderers Havamal. All right, well, while I stand out here in the hot sun getting delirious, uh, I am very thankful to my Patreon supporters for allowing me to continue to make a living off of teaching, making these videos in the places in the square states that I love. And uh, to everyone out there, please know that I am from beautiful Wyoming, the high desert, wishing you all the best. <laughs>